Welcome to Media Pod Smash Mysteries from Beyond, where we're going to look at many mysteries from all over the world. Today's case involves something that we're all familiar with, especially around this season, witches. Now, popular culture and Hollywood have given us many depictions and iconic images of these, but we enjoy them from the safety of our living rooms, knowing that nothing can harm us. But what if that's not the case? Tonight, we're going to meet a man who just went out for a peaceful bike ride one evening and got way more than he bargained for. My friends, this is the case number 001, Witch Hunt. Welcome to a very special Media Pod Smash. We're doing something that, you know, we often teased about in the past, uh, but never actually did. But for the very first time ever, we are on location and we're gonna capture some audio on location. Now, we first brought this up back in one of our first Halloween episodes where we talked about going to Bray Road and due to uh, the nature of, you know, how we are and other circumstances, we didn't make it happen. But here we are doing a special Halloween show on location with the film club and we'll learn more as we get in. So, uh, let's go. So the night was September 11th, 2014. I don't know if there was a lunar event or not going on that night, but it was a Thursday night. I had a, taught a night class that night. I hadn't had an opportunity to get my daily bike ride in, so I decided I'd bike the Oak Leaf Trail as I do every day. And as I'm coming back, uh, probably, I estimate about 10.45 p.m. Uh, I was biking down this exact part of the trail that we're on right now. Uh, I was looking off to the right uh, at this at this parking lot. Explain where we are. Well, so right now we're outside of Seven Bridges. Is that actually the name? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Seven Bridges. But, um, so this is the parking lot that today I was looking at. Oh, this is the one with the lights yeah. that you're looking at? Okay. Yeah. So and you were riding this direction? No, I was riding right? this way. Okay. All right. Yeah, they say that there's a lot of spirits at this park. Well, that makes sense why she's out here at this point. At that late hour. Yeah. yeah. And as I'm coming down the trail, we'll do it in slow motion. Okay? Still got me or not? Yep. So as I'm coming down, I'm looking to my right. At this parking lot, there's no hanging clouds. I'm looking to my right, I'm looking to my right. It's kind of an interesting visual effect. All of a sudden, I, I look left, suddenly. Oh my God. My entire bike ride home, I was really concerned that perhaps I'd run into a coven of witches on my way back. And I was continually frightened, thinking at any moment they might pop right out in front of me. And I think we're about a mile past that uh, uh, seven bridges. Yeah. So we're probably about a mile south. past uh, south of the seven bridges. The seven bridges were known for a lot of ghosts ghost sightings? They say, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're right in the heart of uh, the beast, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is, there is a creepy vibe. I mean, be, imagine again being out here alone late at night and then seeing that. You know, like, it was pretty creepy. I can imagine. What, what, what time was this around? 10.45 p.m. Okay. And you said she didn't say uh, anything at all? No. She didn't even acknowledge. She, uh, she didn't even move. That's so like weird. When I you know, almost ran into her. So maybe like the cloak was so over her face that she didn't see me. Yeah. Because the other thing I always wondered is, 
I had my bike light on, right? Uh huh. So you could see this coming a mile away. We passed a, a biker on the way in. Yeah. You could see her coming a mile away. So like, why? If she was concerned about me seeing her, mm -hmm. why didn't she just step behind one of these trees until I passed? You know. So it's almost like she wanted me to see her. Mm -hmm. you know, she wanted to put some fear into me. Maybe yeah. like. Uh, season of the witch, you know that she needed to create fear. Yes, ah, yes, <laughs> a tie-in. <laughs> <laughs> well, These then are... I thought I might, you know, again run into more. I guess I should just turn on location. Yeah. I, I generally don't do that. It's kind of funny, you know, like whenever I look at internet video compilations of like creepy things caught on camera, I've seen people like in woods and I'm like, there's no way someone's actually seen that. That's gotta be set up, but now it's really happened. I mean, oh well, yeah, whatever religion she believes in, yeah. like she she believes that this she's a witch. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, we're we're um, probably not quite a mile, because there's seven bridges right there. We're probably about a half a mile. Um, is that where we're, that's where we are in the? This is where we are right now. You want to get this, Jeremy? All right. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Okay. So this is uh, there's the lake on the right, and then. We're facing the parking lot that Damon mentioned right now in the distance that he's biking towards. And then this is the Seven Bridges Trail parking lot. Mm -hmm. And we're just slightly, maybe about a half a mile southeast of that. Okay. Um, so if you want to see the witch, perhaps, this would be the way to do it. And then the dot is where we're standing right now, which is not too far from where Damon saw her. That car down there is watching us. I know, I saw that. We're gonna be someone else's witch story. The torch is gone. No. <laughs> That'd be really messed up. Just. Yeah, it's like, let's just, uh, let's just keep walking. Hey, look at this. What is this? See that? Is that a yeah. spider web? Yeah, I think so. But there's like something falling from it. Or is that just part of the web? I think it's just part of the web. The light, the light well, hitting it? Yeah. Does that go all the way down? It must. It looks like it's a straight line. Are you going through it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, I just I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> Are you filming this? Yeah, just in case. You never know, you can never have too much footage. That's so anyways, true. it was a long ride back. <laughs> and uh, it felt like a really long ride back. <laughs> did you did you have trouble sleeping that night? Uh I had um just visions that they're like just outside my door, you know, oh, like man. something out of a horror movie. You know, <laughs> you know like I had discovered something, and they they would they would they needed to silence me. Much like Jason, in part two, when Jason comes to the like suburbia, yeah, to hunt uh, his mom's killer. Yeah, you know, but it's huh? a lot like a. Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Okay. You know, yeah. he, Ron Brolin's tricks Ichabod Crane, uh, you know, into thinking he's the Headless Horseman. And uh, Ichabod gets so scared uh, that he uh, he flees the area and never returns. So it's kind of what happened to me. You know, 
except it wasn't a trick, it was actually a real witch, you know, or someone who believed in witchcraft. Right, it's, right. Uh, whether or not, um, I kind of think that, you know, after looking at the photo um, that I sent you or Facebook, that might have been someone who was interested in Satanism. Okay, um, yeah. Just because the cloak looked a lot, you know, the, the way everything was presented looked, looked that way. But again, a couple weeks later, right around Christmas time, we got together and then I told you guys this story the first time. And then maybe a few weeks after that, Mike sent me a, a news report from maybe like Fox 6 that showed that Stair had found um, like chicken bones ritualistically displayed uh, near where I saw her. Jeez. So, uh, I just thought right away that that must be, you know, you know must have been, the two must have been connected. Yeah. Many, oh, many times over Halloween-ish, uh, if I want to spook my students, I'll tell them that story. Nice. Now they always get a big kick out of it. You know? <laughs> awesome. Well, the hunt for, uh, the Witch of the Oak Leaf Trail went about as well as I think if we would have been hunting for the Beast of Ray Road. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. It's funny you bring that up because I made a reference to it actually when I was at in that lot for the first place we were going to meet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, surprise, surprise, Mike was the witch all along. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Mike and he, well, it didn't, we, it, it was quite an adventure tonight. It was. I enjoyed it. Yeah, this was yeah. fun. We didn't see the witch, but it was a it was a nice it, night too. Yeah, I thought it was beautiful. It it was a very authentic haunted experience. Way better than any haunted house could have given yeah, us. Yeah, it was a scary little walk. Yeah. Sure. I agree with these reviews. This is a really nice <laughs> comfort. Yeah, and you cloak. can win this this cloak. Beautiful Here's cloak. The first comment on the episode. Some people just they wear it. You know, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. About two right. thumbs up for the for the for our witch hunt. Media pod smash off. A truly terrifying tale indeed. So what did Damon really see that evening? Was it actually a witch? Was it multiple witches? Or was it something even more sinister than that? And what would you do if you were in his shoes? Personally, I don't think I've ever seen a witch in my life, but I do believe that at certain points I have been cursed by some of my exes. This is just one of the many bizarre cases that we'll be diving into in Mysteries from Beyond. Before we wrap up this evening's show, we're going to take a look into our mailbag from beyond. Tonight we received a letter from a listener who has a spooky story of her own that she'd like to share. <clears throat> I lived in an old, renovated apartment in Sun Prairie. Lots of little things happened over that year. Sounds, shadows, unexplained spooky neighbors. But the final straw came one night when we left the apartment for the weekend and came home to a mess. Our ancient, barely mobile senior cat bolted out the door when we arrived, and there was a deafening sound of static coming from the stereo which was on max volume. Every kitchen cabinet door was wide open, and every set of blinds was pulled open as high as possible. We had changed the doorknob and lock ourselves when we moved in, and no one should have had access to our unit. We packed up the cat, set up a camcorder, and laughed again. When we pulled the footage the next day, you can hear us announcing our departure and the sound of the door closing and keys in the lock. Just after, there is a minute or two of perfect silence. And then, a devastatingly loud sound, like a train passing through the living room, plays on the audio. We moved out that same week and abandoned the lease. Wow, a truly terrifying tale. Thank you, listener. If you'd like to send in a spooky story of your own, please feel free to reach out to the show. And as always, if you see something strange, just remember, it might be a mystery from beyond. Update. 
Since last filming the witch footage, we received many reports from people that are fans of the show that have claimed that they too have seen witches in the area. Simple prank phone calls? Or more mysteries from beyond? Thank you for tuning in, folks. See you next time. Bye.